Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm shooting at a weird angle because I have to. Um, I don't know where my tripod is, so we've got my microphone on this little boom thingy, and we're gonna go. So um, yeah. Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm coming at you with a slightly different setup. I've lost my tripod. Also, this, this boom mic stand has just broken as well, so really, we're not, we're not in the best of shape, but whatever. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Mirror Cracked from Side to Side by Agatha Christie. So I will read you the blurb. This is Miss Marple book number 9, and the blurb is, uh, One minute, silly Heather Badcock had been gabbling on at her movie idol, the glamorous Marina Gregg. The next, Heather suffered a massive seizure, but for whom was the deadly poison really intended? Marina's frozen expressions suggested she had witnessed something horrific, but while others searched for material evidence, Jane Marple conducted a very different investigation into human nature. I mean, I prefer Miss Marple to Poirot, I know it's kind of sacrilege to say that, but I'm afraid it is the truth. But I, I also like the way that Marple is very much more about, I think more about the uh, the psychology of the crime. I suppose, I suppose Poirot is to an extent as well, but she's very much like an armchair detective. She might not even go and see the crime scene, she'll just hear about it. She actually, at the start of this book, she uh, falls over and then it's Heather Badcock who helps to pick her back up as well. So I think it's interesting that kind of, you know, contrasts, I guess, her the sharpness of her mind with the frailty of her body, you know? As uh, Christy herself describes her, she's an old pussy. But she means in the in the sense of a pussy cat, obviously, not not as in today's the slang of today's youth. I'm going to read some bits that I enjoyed of this. This one uh, I quite liked because I grew up on a street called Blackfriars Close, and she says uh, here the development. And why not, Miss Marple asked herself sternly. These things had to be. The houses were necessary, and they were very well built, or so she had been told planning, or whatever they called it. That why everything had to be called a close, she couldn't imagine. Aubrey close, and Longwood close, and Grandison close, and all the rest of them. Not really closes at all. Miss Marple knew what a close was perfectly. Her uncle had been a canon of Chichester Cathedral. As a child, she had gone to stay with him in the close. We have a moment where someone calls her dear, and uh, it goes, though Miss Marple was perfectly agreeable to be called dear, and even ducks by the woman at the greengrocer or the girl at the paper shop, it annoyed her intensely to be called dear by Miss Knight. Another of those things that elderly ladies have to bear. So, ducks was used quite commonly in the Midlands where I grew up as well. Most notably people, old women on buses used to like to say to me, Cheer up, duck! And then uh, someone comes to see Miss Marple and uh, she goes, A little glass of sherry perhaps? And then he says, I heard you were taken to drink. Well, you should never drink alone. And she actually has like a little cupboard with all of it. She's got a little booze cupboard. All right, and there is a mental image here. So, so Miss Marple's complaining about the healthcare system. She goes, the young doctors are all the same. They take your blood pressure and whatever's the matter with you, you get some kind of mass produced variety of new pills. Pink ones, yellow ones, brown ones. Medicine nowadays is just like a supermarket, all packaged up. Serve you right if I prescribe leeches and black draft and rubbed your chest with camphorated oil. I do that myself when I've got a cough, said Miss Marple with spirit, and very comforting it is. There's this kind of uh, running gag going throughout it as well that she's trying to knit and she didn't do a particularly good job of it, so she had to do a load of unpicking. And uh, and uh, so somebody suggests to it, if you can't knit, what about unravelling for a change? And it's kind of compared to what she does as a sleuth, you know, she unravels the truth behind the murder. Mrs Bantry here, she has a great quote, she just says, some people enjoy being miserable. Which is true, I think. I like this thing as well. Everyone goes along to this sort of this little do to see what's going on, and uh, I'm just I'll just read this this paragraph out. Even Mr. Sampson, the oldest man in St. Mary Mead, boasting proudly of being 96, though his relations insisted firmly that he was only 86, had staggered along supporting his rheumatic legs with a stick to see this excitement. He gave it his highest praise. Ah, there'll be a lot of wickedness here, I don't doubt. Naked men and women drinking and smoking what they call in the papers them reefers. There'll be all that, I expect. Ah, yes, said Mr. Samson with enormous pleasure. There'll be a lot of wickedness. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to go uh, any further into it because I don't want to risk spoilers, but 
suffice to say, again, a, a murder happens at this party, and uh, then Miss Miss uh, Miss Marple starts to investigate the murder. It is quite an enjoyable one. It's quite a long book, actually, for for Marple, like 350 pages in this format, whereas most of the ones I've been reading recently have been sort of 250, 300 pages. But I think. Christie does a real good job, at actually, of having like these movie star characters. And this one's really all about the interpersonal relationships between different people and how family secrets can kind of come back and, and bite you in the ass, you know? And I, I, I just enjoyed it. I gave it a four stars. I always enjoy Miss Marple. This isn't the best. I actually think the best are probably some of the short stories. Miss Marple's final uh, cases was incredible. But this one was pretty good. Yeah go and read it yeah that's that's my thoughts so anyway on that note thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of this book if you've read it also let me know what you think of this little filming setup and uh yeah hit that like button if you enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more and i'll see you more soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye we'll just roll with it nobody noticed that i messed up the outro